Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Gloria, your life and meditation coach. Hi, welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ron Johnson, your mental health coach and soon to be therapist. And today we're going to follow up about friendships. And this is a little deeper dive into not just the high level of friendship of, hey, let's go out and hang out. Let's have fun. Uh, let's go out and party. You know, what is deeper friendships? Because it's very ironic. The older you get, the less friends you have. And I don't know why that is, but I guess that is, right? Things change, values change. People move, people transition out of careers, whatever the case may be. So we're going to discuss chemistry, connection, and friendships. In actuality, chemistry and connection are the same, but we're going to define what it means so that way you can understand, are you in the right kind of friendship? What is a friendship? And how can you navigate when it's not lacking or when you're not getting what you need? I mean, have you ever felt when you try to reach out to somebody over and over again, trying to connect, trying to hang out, or try to just reach out to them and it seems like, oh, they sparingly text you or sparingly call, but you're calling them. You're like, wait a minute, I thought we were friends and I thought we were connecting. How come it's not being mutual? How to navigate that? Because that can be very, very difficult. When do you give up? I've known someone for 15 years, 10 years, and we're just not connecting anymore. When do you give up? So what do you think about that, Gloria? Um, well, friendship, let me ask you this, actually. Do you think friendship, uh, chemistry is important in a friendship? I 100% agree chemistry is important in a friendship. Um, What what can happen if you don't have chemistry in a friendship? um, Often a friendship or relationships can be either way, right? It can be intimate Mm -hmm. relationships or friendship relationship. It becomes very transactional. You know, you only contact them when you feel bad or, oh, I, I missed a birthday. It becomes, it's only when they text you, you text them. It's very transaction. Or you kind of keep them at marinating. Oh, let's get the friendship going because I mean to use them one day. And that becomes very transactional. And I think the other person feels that and they feel pretty disgruntled and they're upset about it. So I think chemistry is important. And and when the, those chemistry is there, you should have an honest, honest conversation with yourself and with the other person. Hey, you no know, chemistry is lacking now. Can we make it better? Or has things changed? Let's be honest with each other. So that way, at least it kind of sets expectation so no one's really getting hurt. That's my answer. Yeah, exactly. And and this this can be something that you'd feel instantly with someone. So there's that that certain click, you know, like quote unquote click when you, you feel that certain click with someone that could just be somebody new that you meet, you know, and you you feel that that connection. Um, with the other person and you quickly feel it it's genuine <clears throat> i like that genuine or genuine whatever you like genuine, to say <laughs> genuine, <yeah>. <laughs> it, <laughs> it doesn't matter all are good uh, so like we, yeah. we think about a, a chemistry and friendship it's usually when a person has a mutual mutual interest mm-hmm. their personableness they share sim- similarities it could be physical attraction like two good looking people or friends um or it could be intimate relationships um, and usually it's it's funny, like when we think about a friendship or a relationship and chemistry connections, it always has to be that click. If the click's not there, you're like, okay, it's not going to work out. 
It's like, right. have you had experience meet for someone for the first time? Like, oh, this makes sense. It's like that click. Or mm-hmm. meet someone for the first time. Oh, I don't want to be around this person. And, and mm-hmm. it can, nothing ever happened. Like nothing kind of stood out that says, oh, my goodness, it's shocking. It could be simply just you just didn't feel like that unconscious connection that you felt with that person. That can be daunting, very difficult, too. Because um, I want the click. I don't, I don't want the, oh, run away. Right, right. But, you know, sometimes this, this click doesn't happen right away. You know, it can happen after meeting the person maybe on the second time around or, or the third time around. And then you start to feel it because sometimes some people doesn't open up right away, especially if you're, you're just meeting a new person. Um, there are people that are already pretty much open on the first day. Um, like I would say uh, for me, um, I'm usually already pretty open the first day um, because I like to be authentic and show who I am. So whether I click with somebody or not, you know, we'll, we'll know. Right. And, and, and I'll know, but, um, yeah, so sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't show up right away. So that's another thing about chemistry is that it can happen on the, on the first time you meet a friend or a new person. And sometimes it doesn't happen until the second or the third time you meet them. And so it could take a while sometimes, but should you, when you start to feel it, no, Let's let's put it this way. When you meet somebody new as a friend and you don't feel that, what can you do? Should you try it again the next time and see if it's there? I think I think I think let's go the, the very first. What is your intentions? Are your intentions to, to form formulate a friendship or to get to know somebody? What are your intentions? Your intentions to network? What are your intentions here? So let's say your intentions is to formulate a friendship and no, in some cases, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, you're, some people are not warm and inviting the first time, and they take a while to warm up. Um, some people are warm right away. Some people never warm at all. I mean, it boils down to your intentions. And I have to consider this. If your intention is to formulate a friendship and the person is not warm and inviting the first time, well, take a step back and kind of look and say, okay, what are my intentions? What do I want to see? And give another try. Because often we we – formulate a payment based upon our first interaction with that person, which is very minuscule and micro level at best. And we formulate a payment about something. We just don't know all the facts or the detail. Or, you know, I've had this happen before. Um, someone had a pain about somebody and that's someone I knew. I knew them for, let's say, a year. And this person I didn't know at all. Formulate a payment about that person. Guess what? I kind of formulate a pain in my mind what is. So I was the stand away from that person for a while until one day it, we warmed up together and they were cool. It kind of find out the person I knew A and the person B just didn't get along. They had a bad thing. So he said something bad about person B. Person A said something bad about person B. And they were a cool guy. They were really, really nice. And um, that, that happens too. I, yeah. I, I'll tell you a good example. <clears throat> So years ago, when I first started going to gym, it had to be 2009, American Barbell in Santa Clara. Um, there were, you know, certain gyms always are cliquish, right? They have their groups of people, they have this, and this is Gold's Gym. So you had a lot of old school bodybuilders, people cliquish, people kind of develop a rapport with their environment, and people knew them. So I came in there with my trainer at the time, and, you know, my idea was to be the next Ronnie Coleman, and that's what I visualized. So, you know, I guess I had this persona that I'm arrogant, I have attitude, I don't care about other people. So one of the dudes one day we're up up in the front buying shirts. And he bumps into me. I'm like, "Oh, what's up, dude? What's going on?" Oh man, I just I just, I just don't like you, man. You you come back with attitude. You're not nice. So I I like took that back. Like, okay, you know, I don't know what he's talking about. So one day, um, about a week later, I said, "His name is John." Hey, John. You know, what's up, buddy? Let's talk. What's going on? Well, I, I feel this way. I said, "Look, you know, that's not the persona I'm trying to achieve, and I'm sorry you feel that way." And we actually had an honest conversation and. We, we we became friends, not like, you know, deeper level friends, but friends were enough where we said hi, we connected, we talked. And that formulated a friendship. He developed a bias about me based upon some things he saw or heard, and he didn't like me because of that. Then until we had a, the intimate conversation, he says, look, you know, that's not really what's happening. He's like, oh, wow, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. And, you know, it, it, that's that, the formulated a friendship out, out of anger, right? Mm-hmm. That's another aspect. Here, a person was upset and formulate a friendship. Um, so it, it's very funny how friendships can be kind of dynamic like that. People can can disconnect and reconnect, um, and people can obviously not can connect and never connect again. It all depends upon the level of friendship. 
And, and so, when you, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you finish. I was going to say, when you think about a friendship, you, you got to think about there's a couple of key things that are there, which are apparent. You know, is there mutual understanding? Is there love? Is there acceptance? Is there passion? I'm sorry, compassion. Uh, is, there, is it mutual? Like, is that feeling mutual? And, and no, it's everything at a state of let's get to know each other and learn and how can we be more upfront and honest? And that's kind of the steps, I guess you would say, the friendship. Now, what were we going to say, Gloria? What I was going to say was in, in that case with your example, so we know that meaningful friendships or just friendship like that can get started without initial chemistry. Yeah. Right? Um, because sometimes um, the, the initial chemistry that, I mean, it's not like we're out there looking for it, right? But we feel it. it that, that doesn't automatically happen or translate into um, developing a friendship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not right away. And I think in that case with yours, just look at that example. First time when you guys, you know, it's, it happens all the time. It a lot out there. So there's not all. It's not going to happen right away that you will have that initial chemistry that you're. If you are looking for it, a lot of the times we're not looking for it. We just feel it. You know, when you meet somebody, you're just like, oh my god, this person's actually cool. This person's whatever, right? And an example would be the gym, right? You meet people. You meet a lot of people at the gym. And there may be people that you feel that certain connection with and some people that you don't. So you start talking to that person, then you end up building a friendship with them. And that's when you know there's something there. And you keep going back to that, to that, to having a conversation or building something with that person. You end up building a friendship. And then that's when you, as you build that friendship with somebody, that's when you also recognize and notice that there is chemistry and there is connection. Now we're talking about, we just talked about chemistry. Let's talk about connection. What is the connection of connection to chemistry in a friendship? Oh, that's a big one. Connection of the connection of chemistry in a friendship. Hmm. You know what? That becomes down to agreeableness. Are they open? Are they conscious? It's a physical attraction there. What do we share in common? What are our needs and wants? Can the other person satisfy our needs and our wants? What's our intention? That's how you develop a better chemistry and connection relationship. Now, the, uh, the, the drawback to all that is what to do when the friendship and connection is fizzled out? Like, we think about that, Gloria. The connection, you said? Yeah, the chemistry and connection. Once it fizzled out, you know, you were friends for a long period of time, and yeah. now it's fizzled out. It just ain't there anymore. If it's not there anymore, it's not there. It, that that's something hard to. Uh, that's a good question. I'm thinking to myself: Do we continue to try and continue this friendship when? The connection and chemistry is no longer there. Most, most importantly, the connection, right? Should we continue this or should we move on our separate ways? Because, you know, if it's no longer there, you don't have that connection with that person any longer. What happens? It can become toxic. Mm. You know what? I will look at that and say this. If your intention is still to remain friends, don't give up. If your intention is to still connect with that person, don't give up. However, there becomes a period where you have to take a step back and you want them to come in and or you want them to make an a, a attempt too. If you're always constantly working at it, working at it, working at it, working at it. You know, it reminds me of a friend I had in the past where I was constantly texting, hey, how you doing? Texting, texting, had us hang out, and always gave me some BS excuse. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to stop doing it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I stopped doing it, and a year plus passed, and that person reached out to me. So right then and there, it, it wasn't mutual. Right then and there, it wasn't a friendship. It was transactional. Because the person would respond, or he would respond, but however, it was this one way. If I send a text, respond. There was never no, no eagerness on the person's part. And that's why I said to myself, I'm taking a step back. 
this relationship is no, lot, no longer satisfying my needs and it be, it's become very frustrating for me. It's no longer give me what I thought was satisfaction. So I take a step back and I kind of move on. I, I doesn't mean I don't want to be a friend with them. I won't communicate or I won't talk to them if they call or text. However, I'm going to protect myself as far as the energy I need to have and expend, right? Energy is only small and finite. So why spend your energy on someone that's not reciprocating? Right? It can go in an intimate relationship. If you're in a relationship and and it's, it's fizzling out and you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, another person can't meet you halfway, how much do you want to go? Do you want to go 100% of the way? If you go 100% of the way, they're still not going to meet you. So what do you do then? You have to re- 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 reevaluate the pieces. Am I getting what I want? Is relationship transactional? Is a lack of connection? What happened? Have I done all I can? So if you've done all you can in any of the intimate relationship or friendship and the person is not reciprocating, then it's not, they're not ready for it. Meaning they're not ready to confront the issue at hand. Because there is an issue there, but they're not ready to confront it. And it's time to be steadfast, be still. And when time is right for them, they'll contact you. When time is right for them, but don't hold your breath. You know, um, you talk about that. And sometimes also when you have that that special, um, a special friend or someone you're close to, a best friend, and you have a certain connection with that person as well. It's also to keep it together and keep everyone close. Is you also have to invest in it, right? If both are not invested in it and only one is, and that means only one maybe just feels that connection with somebody and the other one doesn't. Mm. And I, I find it that, um, you know, when I talk about investment, meaning time with each other, it could just be a simple phone call. It could be a simple text. It could be, let's go have coffee somewhere and let's connect. Sometimes people need to connect with those who are close to them. Mm-hmm. And that's, just, that's with any relationship, I would say. That's it takes it takes um friends having friends or a friendship takes effort and work to build and maintain that chemistry and connection it it takes work unfortunately that's just what it is and sometimes it's natural right it's natural work i mean there could be situations where two people were best friends through high school through college uh through the young adult and one person got married another person is still single Right, their life has changed. Mm-hmm. So, can they still be friends? Of course, they can. But it requires work. While the other person's life has kind of changed, they got married, maybe having kids, so the person has not. It still requires work. And there's even some cases where you don't see your friend for a couple of years, and you guys see each other, and it's like nothing ever stopped. It's like we we nothing ever stopped, nothing ever happened. We're gonna start all over again, but it's good. Nothing changed. We're still friends. We're still connecting. We're still there. We still see the chemistry. Because people's life do change, unfortunately, and that can, can damage a friendship. You know, if, if your friend does not like your husband or your wife, what do you do? Or boyfriend or girlfriend, what, what do you do? Would you stop being their boyfriend, their, uh, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, husband, or a wife because of your friend? Do you listen to your friend because you've been your friend longer? And that's this newly boyfriend, husband, or whatever it is? What, what do you do? I think in those cases that the best thing to do is really look at things objectively. See your friend's point of view objectively, not sub, objectively. See your significant other, your partner's um, view objectively. And maybe you have to intercompartmentalize the friendship and relationship just to protect yourself. I mean, act this way by my friends and be this way by my husband. Maybe they just don't get along. Or maybe they have to, birthday parties, Christmas, or New Year's, whatever it is. But you got to start maybe making it more or less, hey, how can we come together? What is missing? Is there a misunderstanding? Try the best you can. In some cases, you have to take both relationships, intercarpentalize every single one so that way you can protect yourself from being torn apart. I like the way you said that. That's very well said. You know, I'm, th- I'm thinking about women. Women, um, for the most part, I'd say, always needs to have that connection with their friends. 
they need that connection at certain times of their life. And go ahead. No, I, I was going to say I agree. Yeah, they do. And it's very important that we have those friends that we have who understands us, who shares that, you know, let's say, um, shares the same thing that we do or that we have in our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. And, and you have that certain connection with them, um, the chemistry that you have with your with your girlfriends, right? And mm-hmm. this is why you, you notice there's a lot out there who goes on, let's say, girls, what they always say, girls night out, because sometimes mm-hmm. we do need to have a girls night out. And just, you know, when, when, when we do this, when we connect with our girlfriends, um, it is because if we've had a long week, we just need a break from our daily lives. When we connect, it's just, it's just us. It feels like there's nobody else. We forget Everything we leave everything else behind, any issues, any problems we have at home, or whatever it is with others. When we're together, we connect and it makes us feel good because we all share that same feelings. We all sh- share that same, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Similarities, it, yeah, similarities. That's what it is, and understanding, you know. So that's why I think in a friendship. It's very important to have that that kind of love, like compassion with each other, understanding each other, right? Um, mm-hmm. And a question I wanted to ask was, what do you think about this? Can you build a f- chemistry and a connection with someone? Can you build it? Can you build it? If you don't see it there to begin with, Oh, but, you f- but of course you can't build it. Okay. I mean, a, a relationship, a, a continuing friendship relationship is not, hey, we have a friendship and that's it. How do you build deeper connection? How do you, how do you build more intentions? Of course you have to build it. Uh, else will just be there. It's, it's like those people I see for the convenience. When they don't contact you, when it's convenient for them, it's usually transactional. They need something, they want something, they have a question. Right. It's just, I had a friend of convenience one time do this to me, and this had to happen what, 2022, three, four years ago. I haven't heard from this person like four years. Last time I seen them had to be like 2010. So, okay. So it's nine years. They sent me this message on Insta and Instagram, uh, Facebook, and they were cool, but I can tell when I first met them, they were about what they can get out of somebody. They had their set of friends, but how can I get more friends and, and use them for, for uh, whatever it is? And they contacted me over something I said a long time ago, like nine years ago. And what I said was, so this girl that I call friend of convenience, we kind of dated each other, but it didn't work out. And I went to her friend and and it was just kind of complicated. And I said, oh, we should do a threesome, right? That's what I said in, in the message, right? It's like 25 years old at the time. Didn't think nothing of it. Nine years later, this person contacted me. Hey, remember that scenario about that friend? Out the blue. I'm like, wait a minute. I never met her friend. Her and I aren't friends anymore. Don't you have something better to do with your time? Then, then reach out to me nine years later about something that I, I don't remember. I'm not in state of mind at this point in my life thinking about you. So something my coach said, he says, when things like that happen, don't get angry. Because I did. I got really angry. She said, he said, now she, he said, respond in this way. I'm sorry, whatever I've done in the past, I was not that person at the right frame of mind. However, if you want to get to know me now, I have no problem, but I'm not that person anymore. And forgive me. Leave it at that. Because you're going to bring up an old scenario I said, oh my God, I mean, like 10 years, nine, 10 years ago, a scenario. I'm like, I can't remember that. Like, I actually, the friend she mentioned, I had to go find them on Facebook to look at the picture and see who, who the hell are you talking about? So I had to do that. I had to look them up and find them. Oh, I never met this girl. I just made a comment, maybe in my drunken stupor, or maybe I was just messing around to see what happened. But I said it, and it is what it is. And that person never contacted me again because it wasn't a, a relationship that was built. It was for the convenience. Relationships, chemistry uh, have to be built and have to be maintained. 
right? So if you're building a relationship and you keep going, keep going, but yet the, the bottom pieces are being fractured in the relationship, right? Because as you build it, you yeah. got to look back and maybe repair those bottom pieces, take a step back and rebuild and say, okay, what, what piece here was broken? So keep, can rebuild it because relationships do change. Friendships do fizzle out. Chemistry does fizzle out. Well, how, what was broken? Let's go back. If we want to both go back, in the situation I explained, we're not friends. I didn't want to go back to a relationship. I didn't bother entertaining those kind of things, especially when you're not in a frame of mind or the same person 10 years ago. No, I'm not going to do that. So that's what I would say. So yes, to answer your question, I'll, after multiple examples, chemistry connection has to be built and maintained. It's like I said earlier, it's, it's work and effort. It takes oh, a it lot is. of work and effort. And that's not just with any friendship. It's with any relationship. And I think that you'd, you'd want to want it to make it yes. happen, right? You need to be proactive about it. And I would also say, like, as far as, like, having, this, you know, building that connection and friendship with someone, just keep in mind that we're all the same, right? We yeah. are all the same. We're all human beings. But we bring, we have something special that we bring to the table. Certainly we do. So we're all the same, but yet we're all different. And then you can connect that somehow. And it does take work. Oh yeah. Continuous work. And yes, continuous work. Um, but the only thing is like, if you continue to work and the other person is not, and you don't, and you know, you'll eventually see that the, that if it's a one way if this is just a one-way street, like you, it's only you making uh, making the effort and uh, making it work, but the other is not. Then I would say, you know, that's when you know it's time to let go. That maybe this is not the right friendship for you. You, yep. you know, you may see a good pot- a potential, but the other person doesn't. Then that's when it's time to back to just kind of back it up a little bit, like what you said. Slowly back it up, and and again, in a lot of the friendships that we've had for so many years that we've had. A lot of conne- we've had connection and chemistry with someone we've known for so long, and we've built it. We've built this friendship with someone for so many years. Like what Ron is saying is that it can phase out, right? What happens is as you get older, you grow together. So when you grow together, you'll have different perspectives in life, and you either are together with this and support each other, or you're not. Or you can you may just end up going your separate ways, mm-hmm. and when you do, it's okay, and that's when you know you realize well maybe it's time. And sadly, you'll yes. have to let go, right? Because you can't force it. If it's no longer there, you can't force it, and you can't also force when the other doesn't want to. You can't force them that's not there. Right. That's that's exactly. the bottom line. You can't force them that's not there. You can, and you also don't want to force it because you don't want to do something. You don't want to do something that you don't want to do. Does that make sense? Um, it's just, it doesn't feel good. Like for instance, if I force myself to continue to have this friendship with someone that deep down, I feel that it may not be there anymore and it's no longer there because we just do not share that same connection anymore. You know, and that we don't share the same um, feelings that we have in, in life or just in friends, just being friends. And I'm only forcing myself to do something I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't feel good. No. So then you'd have to come to that exception of maybe this is it. This is the end of it. I agree. You do. That's where you got to realize what is best for me. That's the guess. What is best for me? And you need to figure that out. I can't, I give, you have to fill in the blank. What is best for you? Yeah. And you, you have friends that um, come and go, and then you'll have friends that you'll have for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And you'll know. You'll know. So that's our rundown and chemistry, connection, friendships, and relationships, because they're all the same, right? I mean, even intimate relationships. And you guys can see the steps how, what does friendship look like? The steps when, it doesn't look like, how's it transactional, how to overcome it, how to know when to give up, how to know when to realize your intentions and what do you want. And I want to say thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ronald Johnson. 
And this is Gloria. Again, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Mm-hmm.